going to be sharing with you my three favorite techniques for using the Dollar Tree Deco Mesh. Now I've been using the Dollar Tree Deco Mesh for several years now in my crafts and the only problem is that it does tend to fray whenever you use a cut method. So I've come up with three different techniques that I like to use that greatly reduce or eliminate any fraying from Dollar Tree Deco Mesh. So I'm going to share those with you today. Let's go ahead and get started with the first technique. The first method is called the poof or bubble method. Now this method is normally used with 10 inch or larger mesh, but because I use Dollar Tree mesh, I needed to figure out a way where I could use it to do this method. And this was my solution. When I'm working with Dollar Tree mesh for this method, I like to put one color out on each side of my body so that they don't tangle together. You'll want to scrunch the ends and put them side by side and attach a pipe cleaner. It's best to have them side by side and not overlapping. If they're overlapping, it makes it more difficult for you to separate the poofs when you're done. You'll want to attach the deco mesh to the crossbar to get it secure so that it doesn't slide while you're working on it. Once the end is secure, you'll want to stretch out your deco mesh and measure it to 8 inches. Pinch it at 8 inches and attach your pipe cleaner. Once that's securely attached to the deco mesh, then you'll want to attach to the two bars in the middle on the frame. It will take about six poofs to fill each section of the frame. Once you've completed a section of your wreath, then go back and fluff it out. On this two color wreath, you'll want to pull the white to one side and the yellow to the other. Then on the next one, do the opposite. This way, the both colors will be evenly mixed throughout the wreath. Once your wreath is complete, this is what the base will look like. This method can also be done with three different colors. You'll want to take the ends and scrunch them together and place them side by side, just like you did with the two colors. You'll want to attach your pipe cleaner and get it secure. You'll want to pull your mesh and measure out to 8 inches. If you are using a larger ring, you can always increase the size of your poof to 10 inches. When I use an 18 inch wreath, I usually pull my poofs to 10 inches. On a 14 inch wreath, I pull at 8 inches. Once you've completed a section of your wreath, then go back and fluff it out. Just like you did with the two colors, you want to make sure to vary when you're pulling the colors. This way, the wreath will be nicely mixed. Once you're finished with this, this is what the base will look like. The second technique is called the folded ruffle method. I personally came up with this method because I really dislike the fraying of the Dollar Tree mesh. This technique greatly reduces any fraying that you get from the mesh. And this is how it's done. 
You'll want to measure your deco mesh at 20 inches. Then you'll want to fold the two ends over each other by about an inch. Press down, grab it in the center, and flip it over. While you're still holding the center down, grab one end and scrunch up like you would on a normal ruffle. Attach your pipe cleaner and get it secure. When you attach this to the wreath form, you'll be attaching it to the two bars in the center of the wreath form. Depending on how thick and fluffy you want your wreath, will determine how many ruffles you put in each section. Usually four to five is sufficient. Once you're finished with this, this is what the base will look like. For technique number three, we will be using the petal method. This method is a little bit more advanced and will take a little bit more patience to do. You'll want to cut your mesh at six inches. You'll want to use a ruler and a rotary cutter if you have one. It's important that the cuts are nice and straight. To do the petal, you take one corner and fold it over diagonally to the opposite corner. Then you'll fold in each end of either side. Scrunch it in the middle. Attach a pipe cleaner and this is your petal. This technique is a layering technique where you need to lay one petal over the other. In this way, it will hide the ends so you don't see the cut part of the mesh. Once you're finished with this, this is what the base will look like. Thank you so much for stopping by. I hope you enjoyed today's tutorial, and I hope these three techniques will help you improve upon your wreath making. Thanks again for stopping by. It's always a pleasure to see you. I hope you and your family are all staying happy, healthy, and strong. You have a great day, and I will catch you next time.